In today's video we will study about airborne microorganisms. I hope you all will like it. Airborne microorganisms. Airborne particles are a major cause of respiratory ailments of humans, causing allergies, asthma, and pathogenic infections of the respiratory tract. Airborne fungal spores are also important agents of plant disease, and the means for dissemination of many common saprotrophic, saprophytic, fungi. Here we consider some important respiratory diseases of humans. The roles of airborne spores in crop diseases. The methods used to monitor spore populations in the air. During a sneeze, millions of tiny droplets of water and mucus are expelled at about 200 miles per hour, it means 100 meters per second. The droplets initially are about 10 to 100 micrometers diameter, but they dry rapidly to droplet nuclei of 1 to 4 micrometers, containing virus particles or bacteria. This is a major means of transmission of several diseases of humans, shown in the table. Virus-related diseases are chickenpox which is caused by varicella virus, flu caused by influenza, measles caused by rubella virus, German measles caused by rubella and mumps caused by mumps virus. And there are some bacterial-related diseases such as whooping cough caused by Bordetella pertussis, meningitis caused by Neisseria species, diphtheria caused by Corine bacterium diphtheria pneumonia caused by mycoplasma pneumonia and tuberculosis caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria. There are several other diseases which are acquiring by inhaling particles from environmental sources, not directly from an infected person such as. Psittacosis is a serious disease acquired by handling birds or by inhaling dust from bird feces. It is caused by the bacterium Chlamydia cittasi, an obligate intracellular parasite, after entering the respiratory tract, the cells are transported to the liver and spleen, multiply there, and then invade the lungs, causing inflammation, hemorrhage and pneumonia. Legionnaire's disease is a fairly common form of pneumonia in older or immune-compromised people. It is seldom transmitted directly from person to person. The bacterium is an aquatic rod-shaped species with a temperature optimum of about 36 oc and is a common inhabitant of warm water systems and buildings. Infection occurs when people inhale aerosol droplets containing the bacteria. Extrinsic allergic alveolitis is a serious hypersensitive response, usually associated with repeated exposure to airborne spores in the work environment. A classic example is the condition termed farmer's lung, caused by exposure to spores of thermophilic actinomycetes. Aspergillosis, astoplasmosis, and coccidioidomycosis are examples of serious fungal infections of humans, initiated by spores deposited in the alveoli. They can be life-threatening diseases of immune-compromised people, when the fungi disseminate from the lungs to major organs of the body. However, in all cases the infection of humans is incidental to the fungus, playing no part in its normal biology. These are fungi that grow naturally as decomposer organisms in soil, bird feces, or other organic substrates. It is a figure of Aspergillus fumigatus. In figure atypical sporing heads of the fungus in laboratory culture is shown. Spores are produced from phyllides that arise from the upper part of a club-shaped swelling of an erect hypha. In figure B microscopic section of lung tissue, stained to show hyphae of Aspergillus in an air sac. Such a ball of hyphae growing saprotrophically in the lung is termed an aspergilloma. Air sampling methods. Air sampling is used routinely to monitor the populations of airborne particles and to inform the public about air quality and pollen spore counts through public broadcasting, weather reports, etc. It is used by major hospitals to monitor the populations of specific allergenic particles, fungal spores, etc. so that the causes of patients' allergies can be determined and it is used in crop pathology for disease forecasting so that growers can apply fungicides as and when required. Here we will consider three major types of sampling device for detecting fungal spore loads in air. 1. The Rado Rod Sampler 2. The Burkhardt Sampler 3. The Anderson Sampler. The Roto Rod Spore Sampler. The Rado Rod Sampler is a cheap, simple and portable air sampler. It consists of a U-shaped metal rod attached by a spindle to a battery-powered electric motor. The motor causes the upright arms of the metal rod to rotate at high speed. To use the sampler, the upright arms are covered with narrow strips of sticky tape so that any spores in the air will impact onto the tapes. 
Then the tapes are removed and examined microscopically to identify the spores and other particles such as pollen grains in the air. Some examples are shown in figures D and D. One of the advantages of the Roto rod sampler is that it can be used to precisely locate a source of spores of a particular fungus. Many important pathogens of crop plants have large spores that impact readily onto plant surfaces to initiate infection. The Burkhard spore sampler acts on the same principle as the Roto rod sampler, but is used to give a continuous record of particles in the air over a period of 24 hours or up to 7 days. The apparatus consists of an air-sealed drum that contains a clockwork rotating disc which makes a single revolution in seven days. It is possible to distinguish clearly between night-released and day-released spores or other particles and also to relate the types of particle to different weather conditions, e.g. humid or dry periods, while the apparatus was running. The Burkhardt spore trap is commonly used for continuous monitoring of spore or pollen loads in the air. For example, these traps are commonly sited on hospital roofs, meteorological stations, and other public buildings, and provide public information through TV and radio broadcasts. The principle is exactly the same as in the Roto Rot sampler, because the trapping of particles is based on impaction. The limitations also are the same, only the larger particles with sufficient mass will impact on the tapes at the air speeds generated by this type of sampler. The Anderson Sampler the Anderson Sampler is an ingenious device for selectively trapping different sizes of particles according to their size. This sampler consists of a stack of eight metal sections that fit together with ring seals to form an airtight cylinder. To use this sampler, open agar plates are placed between each metal section, resting on three studs. When fully assembled, an electric motor sucks air from the bottom of the unit, causing sporulated air to enter at the top and to pass down through the cylinder. The path taken by this air is shown in figure O. Air sucked in at the top of the column travels at relatively low speed towards the first agar plate, and so only the largest particles impact onto the agar surface. The air then travels round the edge of the agar plate, and through the perforations to the second agar plate, and so on. As this process continues down the stack, the same volume of air is forced to travel through successively smaller perforations, and so the air speed is progressively increased. The progressively increased air speed lower down the column raises the momentum of the airborne particles so that even the very smallest particles can impact onto the lower agar plates. When the sampler has run for 5 to 15 minutes or more, the metal plates are separated and the petri dishes are removed for incubation to identify the colonies that develop. Figure P shows an agar plate from the bottom level of an Anderson sampler. Figures Q and R show agar plates from the middle part of the Anderson sampler, where several species of Aspergillus and Penicillium have developed from spores about 3 to 5 micrometers diameter. One of the interesting features of the Anderson sampler is that it mimics the deposition of spores in the human respiratory tract. See figure O. The human respiratory tract as an air sampling device. The respiratory tract is highly effective in trapping airborne particles with sometimes serious consequences for health. The mechanisms involved depend on particle size. Large particles have sufficient mass to impact onto surfaces, even at low air speeds. They break free from the air as it flows around obstacles. During normal breathing, the airflow in the nose and trachea is about 100 centimeters per second sufficient for pollen grains and larger fungal spores to be retained on the mucosa, where they can cause typical hay fever symptoms like rhinitis and asthma. As we have seen, these are the types of particle the impactors detected by the Roto Rod and Burkhardt samplers and also found on the top plates of the Anderson sampler. Smaller particles do not impact at these air speeds, and the air speed decreases as the respiratory system branches further down. So all the particles of 5 micrometers or less are carried deep into the lungs. There they can settle out by sedimentation in the brief periods when the air is calm between successive breaths. This is how some of the serious fungal infections of humans are initiated as pergillomas, as toplasmosis, coccidioidomycosis, etc., even smaller particles, such as the spores of actinomycetes, about one micrometer, are less efficient at being deposited in the alveoli. But repeated exposure to spore clouds by agricultural workers can lead to sensitization and extrinsic allergic alveolitis, farmer's lung, etc. Very small particles, less than about 0.5 micrometers, do not impact but are moved by diffusion, Brownian motion, 
which brings them randomly into contact with surfaces in the lungs. This is true of the fine dusts that cause many occupational diseases. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked this video then don't forget to like and subscribe the channel.